Welcome. Today we have two tricks to show you that you would believe are from magic, but it's just plain physics. Polarization of charge. Polarization is the separation of positive and negative charges of an object due to the presence of charge. As you can see, the balloon has a negative charge. When it approaches the wall, the protons are attracted to the balloon and the electrons are repelled. The charges in the wall separate, making the wall polarized. We will come back to this subject when we talk about the charges of each trick. Our first trick is trick three. My friend is holding the magic wand, and now she's bringing it closer to the golden ball, and it is attracted to it. After they touch, the ball is repelled by the magic wand. In this trick, the magic wand is the insulator, and the gold ball is a conductor. At the beginning, the magic wand has five negative electrons and three positive charges, meaning it has an overall negative charge. The gold ball, on the other hand, has equal charges, two positives and two negatives, meaning it is neutral. However, once the wand touches the ball, it gives off one electron to the ball, making it now have a negative charge as well. Because both have negative charges, they avoid each other. In the next slide, I will reveal how this trick works. The magic wand gained negative electrons due to the charging by friction. The ball, on the other hand, is neutral at first but experiences polarization of charge when the wand is brought near it as the positive charges are attracted to the negative ones of a wand. Once a wand touches it, the ball becomes equally negatively charged as a wand due to charging by contact. Since now both are negatively charged, they repel each other, making the ball go into the opposite direction of the wand. During the whole trick, the total amount of charge before and after charging is conserved, as well as the charges were solely transferred, not created or destroyed. Our final trick is trick number seven. To begin, I rub the wand with a cloth. <laughs> Then I bring the wand close to the can. I pull the wand away from the can and the can follows the wand. Before the experiment begins, we know that the can has a neutral charge because it has the same number of protons and electrons. The cloth and the wand are neutrally charged as well. The can is a conductor because it conducts charge and the wand is an insulator because it doesn't allow for um, the exchange of a charge. After the experiment, after you rub the wand, you can see that the wand now has a negative charge and the cloth has an overall positive charge. When you bring the wand close to the can, the can becomes polarized because the positive protons in the can are attracted to the electrons in the wand. The protons in the can separate from the electrons in the can, and when the wand is pulled away from the can, the protons, because they are attracted to the wand, the can follows. Before the experiment begins, the cloth, can, and the wand all have a neutral charge, meaning the number of protons and electrons are equal. When you rub the wand against the cloth, the wand becomes negatively charged. Because of the conservation of charge, the amount of charge is equal between the cloth and the wand, before and after the rubbing. The wand becomes negatively charged through friction. The wand is an insulator because it, because it does not allow for the transfer of charge, while the can is a conductor because it is metal. When the wand gets close to the can, the protons in the can move to the front, closer to the wand, and the electrons move to the back. They separate, so they can become polarized. When the, can, when the wand moves, the protons in the can are attracted to the electrons in the wand, so the can moves in the direction of the wand. I hope today you learned more about some of these concepts, such as charging by friction, which is a transfer of negative charges from one object to another by friction, and charging by contact, which is a transfer of charges by direct contact. The main takeaway from today is that magic, unfortunately, does not exist. Thank you for watching and see you in class.